So you've been inducted into the Navy, and you're arriving with a detail of recruits at the United States Naval Training Station at Great Lakes, Illinois. Yesterday, you left your home in Farmville, Illinois, or in Nashville, Tennessee, or Hopkinsville, Kentucky. You're mighty anxious to know what's ahead of you. Yesterday, you were a machinist, baker, grocer, tinsmith, cowboy, broker, painter, clerk. That was yesterday. Tomorrow you will be a sailor. Great Lakes is the most magnificent naval training establishment in the world. But more than that, Great Lakes is men, more than 70,000, eager to fight for the country and soon to get the chance. You will learn many things here, valuable on shipboard and in combat. But whatever else you may learn, one thing you will never forget, to fight and live the Navy way. I right, get on your square cards, pointing to your bullet numbers. I take your packing slip, shipping tags, medical history sheet. Lay these papers right down in the corner of the square in which you're standing, flat on the deck. I take and put inside of your ditty bag all the personal things that you're going to keep here with you. There was a list of those things. I don't get in the other room. Now take your clothing, put them inside your box. Okay, Max. You're holding up the Navy. This is, it's embarrassing, isn't it? I got a raise today. Manager of the basement shoe department. Well, it's about time. The way you slave a clan and shoemaker, I should think they would. Mother, I... I've decided this time Agnes and I got married. Frankie, if you had the brains of a flea. It ain't that I don't want to see my boy happily married, mind you. But I don't like to see you rushing into things. Well, we've been engaged eight years already. You got plenty of time. It's no use, Mother. You're not going to talk me out of it this time. I'm going right over and tell Agnes. Frankie! It's your own mother advising you. Mother, you've got to realize that I'm a man. Agnes! Agnes! Oh, Frankie, you surprised me. I surprised you. What do you mean, spoogling with that, that, that private? Oh, Corporal. Yes, Corporal. Don't, don't you realize you're engaged to me? Yes, Frankie. We've been engaged for eight years. Well, not anymore, we're not. You'll never see me again, you, you she-wolf. Frankie! Oh, Frankie! done something awful. Oh, why doesn't he come home? He's just got a peeve on tonight. There he is now. Frankie, please, I've got to talk to you. I was just trying to make you jealous so you'd find me set a date for our wedding. Yes, and you were that corporal. That corporal was my cousin. You're your cousin. I know all about those... Your cousin. Good gracious. Oh, what is it, Frankie? I went out and joined the Navy. I'll make a good sailor at that. Who said you wouldn't? Oh, well, Agnes, that's my girl. She said I couldn't make the grade. Why, well, I'm only 38 and a half and in good shape, too. <coughs> I went to Chicago this afternoon and made arrangements to be inducted into the Navy. 
good going now. As an ordinary sailor. Well, not too ordinary, I hope, Mother. But Malcolm, why couldn't you have done something about her? A commission? Yes, ma'am. With your background, you... Look, this is the way I want it. Just this once, I'd like to do something in spite of being a Randall, not just because of it. Well, I'm due in town to drink a few farewells. We'll say goodbye in the morning. Night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, I will say the boy has courage. Well, I must admit, I'm, I'm rather proud of the boy. Well, Sprite, I guess this is it. Love me? Nope. Just the freckle-faced kid from next door. No glamour, huh? Uh, don't ever sell yourself short, Trudy. You've got plenty. But, well, I'm going in there, and I don't know what's going to be, so you find yourself a nice, home-loving guy and marry him. Just for the head, I will. <laughs> Goodbye, now. Bye. in the honor company, Billy, and bring me back the rooster flag. Hope so, Mom. Your dad brought that one when he came home on his boot leave. The rooster and a diamond ring. You know, I think he was more excited about the rooster than the ring. I'll bring the rooster flag home to you, too, Mom. That's the spirit. Well, you better get going, son. Gee, Mom. Uh, well, what is it, Billy? This will be the first time I'm away from you. Reckon it's all right to tell you, Baldy. It's from the Navy. Young Steve. Lost in the big sea battle. Somewhere his name of Monday or Munda or something like that. That kid was Steve's whole life. Yeah. Hey, what's the sense of me sending these things home when I'm getting out of here in a couple of days? Oh, so you're leaving us, huh? The skipper won't like that. The way it is, I'm getting deferred, see? Oh, you got it all fixed up, huh? Well, uh, just to please the skipper and me, will you put your clothes in that box like you were told to?
If you'd done like I told you, you'd taken him two rounds sooner. I gave him the elbow and the thumb and the eye, didn't I? I cut him where it hurts, didn't I? What do you want me to do, hit him on the referee? Okay, okay, you and your hot head. Grandstander for that blonde bimbo, too, wasn't you? Yeah, and plenty nice, too. I got a date with her later. Oh, dames, a dime a dozen. God, you give him a dime, I want a dozen. <laughs> Come in. Scram, Gaudi. Oh, Mama! Oh, what do you think? Mike Jacobs wants me to come to New York and meet Kid Atkins. Jay's that good. good. Very good. Jay, look, Johnny puts him away and we get a crack at the champ. Of course, up to now, we ain't netted much but with training expenses and all that. But from now on... First thing you're gonna do is move out of that ratty tenement and get a nice house in the country. You're at Papa! And Papa's gonna have a nice yard full of chickens and stay home all day and take care of them. No more climbing up those rickety ladders with a hot bull of bricks. From now on, we're on easy street. Say, what do you like this? <laughs> Telegrams from every big promoter in the country. Yes, sir. And how do you like this? Greetings from the President of the United States. The President? Hey, they can't do this to us. What's the matter, Hammy? Well, this thing, this, this ain't from the President. Here, read it. Greetings from the President of the United States. Having submitted yourself to a local board composed of your neighbors for the purpose of determining your availability for training and service in the Armed Forces of the United States, you are hereby notified that you have now been selected for training and services in... John Wright, they can't do this to me. Not right now, anyways. They'll have to defer me until after I meet the champ. Sure, sure. Plenty of guys getting deferments. Maybe they needed a man, Johnny. They can't wait for... Sure. Maybe after the war... After the war, my eye! For years, I've been getting my head bashed in. Finally, I get a chance to, to get in the money and be somebody. A fighter can't wait. I'll be past my prime. Maybe I'll lose an arm or a leg. No, Sonny. Oh, I'd have played, Pop. You know that. Well, what kind of a fighter would I be with one hand? Oh, look. What are you nice people worrying about? What do you got Hammy Jerome for a manager for, huh? Have I got friends? Have I got people that can't see? Now, stop worrying. I'll take care of everything. <laughs> now stop worrying. I'll take care of everything. Of course, we have to play along for a while, but I'll have you out of here in no time. Just a minute. Are you a recruit? Who, me? No, no, no. This is Johnny Jersey, the fighter. Uh, hey, look, pal, I'll just go in and talk to the boss of the joint for a minute. That won't be necessary. We'll take care of Johnny for you. Well, don't you worry, Johnny. They can't shove you around. I'll take care of everything. Okay. On your way. Like I said, I won't be here long. But while I'm hanging around, maybe you guys would like for me to put your boxing thing on the map. You mean uh, you wouldn't expect to get paid? No, not if you can arrange it. Of course, you haven't got many pros of my standing around this joint, though. What did you say your name was again? Johnny Zamano. But you'll know me better by my ring name. Johnny Jersey? Johnny Jersey? Gee, I almost missed you. You're the guy the skipper told me to look out for. He did? Sure. He says to me, uh, Saxon? Saxon, that's me. He says, we got Johnny Jersey, that terrific fighter, coming in with that new bunch of recruits. And I want you to see that he gets specially taken care of. You don't see? Sure. Uh, take this box for Mr. Jersey. And I want you to come with me, because I want to see that you get a specially good outfit. Hey, what is this? This stuff's too little. Why, you want to look snappy, don't you? Uh, you want to show off them muscles? Hey, this will kick the sun out of your eyes. <laughs> What's going on here? Well, this oh, this coming coming I'm pipe right? down the both of you. And come with me. The rest of you carry on. It was just a little misunderstanding, Chief. Misunderstanding my eye. Your goon here, for no reason at all, tries to make an egghead out of me. He was getting so cocky, I just wanted to take him down a peg. You're asking for a mouthful of teeth. Knock it off. Where do you think you are? In a pool room? Well, tell him to lay off of me. Saxon, you've been warned before about ragging the boots. I guess the only way to teach you is get you busted. Holy smoke, Chief. It took me a year to get my rating. You gotta show that before. That's all, Saxon. Maybe I should have taken a poke at him for luck. Get off the desk. Don't do no poking around here. You learn to batten down your temper and take orders. Maybe I will or maybe I won't. You're a pretty tough character, aren't you? Nobody's shoving me around whether he's got on a uniform or not. 
Now, listen to me, Jersey, or Zamano, or whatever your name is. I didn't ask to have you put in my company. But as long as it's up to me to make a sailor out of you, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it if I have to swap the deck with you. Is that all? That's all. For now. Now, go on back to Billing Inn and get an outfit that fits you. Smoke. I may as well tell you now, while you're here for your boot training, I'm going to work the pants off you. But what you learn here will be the foundation of your Navy career. I could stand here all day telling you about your duty to your country and to the service, but it's all summed up in the oath of allegiance you took when you were inducted. Any of you remember it? I think I do, sir. All right, repeat the oath, and the rest of you listen carefully. And remember exactly what it means. I, William Jameson, do solemnly swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the United States of America, that I will serve them honestly and faithfully against all their enemies whomsoever, and that I will observe the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to the rules and articles for the government of the Navy. Yeah, I sure hope we could be on a company and win the rooster. You mean if we do our work good, we get chicken? No, it's a flag. The company that's best in cleanliness, efficiency, physical ability, and studies gets it at the graduation. Oh, that's a lot of Boy Scouts junk. Oh, it isn't. It's a great honor. My father's company won it when he was here during the last war. I took it home to my mother. I kind of promised her I'd do the same if I could. Sure you will. We'll see to that. What a bunch of suckers. For a little flag of some kind, you guys will work your heads off. I don't get you, Johnny. With an attitude like that, you're likely to wind up in trouble and get yourself kicked out. You think that'll be bad? Oh, he's kidding. I read about him in the papers. He's dynamite. Maybe I don't get you, Randall. What are you doing here, slumming? With your education in pull, you should have at least a couple of gold braids on your sleeve. <laughs> what makes you think I could? Say, with a million bucks, you can buy anything in the world. <laughs> Sometimes a million dollars sets up plenty of handicaps. Name two. <laughs> <laughs> What are you trying to do, get us in trouble? That's a wave. Yeah, I like the way she ripples. Mr. Riley. Uh-oh, now we're in for it. She's going to talk to the chief. I'm disappearing like a flying file. Come on. Hey, Mac! Agnes, I didn't do a thing. Which one of you whistled at that wave? I did. Well, she wants you to take a walk with her. Is it all right? Sure, it's all right. Go ahead. All right, shove up, shove up, you guys. Oh, well, Getting tired? No, it's nice under here. Where do I put this thing? Just leave it right there. Well, you finish unpacking this cart, and that'll be all for now. Thank you very much. Don't mention it. I won't. It was nice of your chief to lend you to me. The shipments of pills are backbreaking. What'd you do before you got in the Navy? Run a slave ship? <laughs> Come on, what happened? Yeah, what happened? What yeah. would happen? Boy meets girl, very, very nice. <laughs> I got her strictly under control. You know what you guys need is a little technique. You fellas seen this schedule? I am Now that we need all this footwork for, physical training. That's what we need. You'll get it, son. But you got to use your brains, too, see? You certainly do, see? <laughs> You're a little old to be starting out in the Navy, ain't you, Pop? Not too old to teach you squirts a thing or two. Say, the chief said they got a store over here where you can get toothpaste and things. Yeah, a ship service. No, it's just a store. I'm going over. Anybody want to come along? Sure. Hey, wait for me. <laughs> That's the third time, clumsy. Maybe that'll teach you to be more careful. I'm 
You don't have to help me. Why didn't you go with the others? Oh, I didn't need anything. Here. Yeah. you right to her. Yeah, make you feel better. How'd you know? I had a boy of my own. I guess I know a little touch of homesickness when I see it. Nothing to be ashamed of. You had a boy? Yeah, just about your age. 18 when he joined the Navy. We got the news about him a couple of weeks ago. Gee. Thought I had something to worry about. Well, uh, how about an ice cream soda? That'll go fine. I thought so. When you get through here, you'll make somebody a good wife. Yes, Agnes. <laughs> Why, you little drip. That's all I'm gonna take. Why don't you pick on somebody your own size? Oh, no, wait a minute. Johnny, you should have done that. I get tired of watching him push the kid around. Hey, fellas, Jiggers, the chief. All right, who did it? I didn't. Come on, who did it? Well, what about it, Jocelyn? Uh, I tripped over the brace and hit my head, sir. I see. I thought for a minute somebody slugged you. No, sir. All right, get on the ball. Do with the rifle range in 15 minutes. Yes, sir. You still say you shouldn't have slugged him. If that's the way you feel about it, why didn't you tell on me? I'm not even going to answer that. It wouldn't be Navy, huh? You gotta understand, Johnny, we're shipmates. We gotta pull together. Not only that, if Riley puts you on report, it'll go against the whole company. Might cost us our chances of winning the rooster. What's the matter with your hand? Nothing. All right, all right. All heads gather around. Gonna be a boxing tournament Saturday between this company and Company 104. Oh, sure. yeah. 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 That'll be four pounds. Company 104 is giving us a close run for the rooster, and we've got to beat them. I understand we have some real fighters here. They put me down. All right. Now we need a middleweight for the main event. That's you, Johnny. Here's your chance. Uh, he's a one-punch fighter. He does all his battling with his mouth. Take it easy. <laughs> all right, how about it, Samantha? Okay. I just figured you wouldn't have anybody that could make the show worthwhile. Don't worry about that. You're gonna fight Ralph O'Connor. Never heard of him. Into a collegiate champion, isn't he? That's right. College man, huh? I like that.
season will announce the main event, Chaplin Benson. middleweight champion representing company 104 and 158 pounds, Ralph O'Connell. <laughs> and in this corner, the runner-up to the professional middleweight championship representing company 101 and 156 pounds, Johnny Zomano. New Jersey. in the first round, do you? This is the round, Jersey, but I think he'll take you. You can finish that yourself, Miss Sayre. Thank you. Maybe I'm dumb or something. Meaning what? I win for him and they give me the raspberry. It's how you won, Jersey. That's what they were booing. Pass me the scissors. What's the difference how? As long as you win, that's what they've always told me. Well, they told you wrong, Jersey. 
You were probably pushed around a lot when you were a kid, weren't you? I don't know what you mean. Since I was seven, I was selling papers, hustling crates in the markets, anything to earn a dime. But nobody ever pushed me around. I'd like to see them try it. That's just what I mean. You were hurt and scared. So you had to become the toughest guy in the town. Why don't you ease up and relax? Take the chip off your shoulders. You're among friends. Am I, Professor? Now I'll tell you something else about me. Mm -hmm. I've been dying to see you again. And to... I could have you put on report for that. Oh, no, you wouldn't do that. You're beautiful and you can't blame a guy. Do you have to be a pharmacist mate all the time? Your hand will be well in a few days. Get in touch with pharmacist mate McCary when you need redressing. That frozen face? Well, let's start all over again. What do you say? Ow! You do need a nurse. Sure I do. Can I come back and see you when I need a new bandage? <laughs> all right. Thanks for everything. Me, I want nothing more to do with it. You just got to teach him different, that's all. You can't teach him. What would you fellows say if I told you he went in that fight with a busted hand? Hey, well, what, what, do you, what do you mean? Before the fight? Yeah, sure, he hurt his hand when he hit Jocelyn. Why didn't you say something? He shouldn't go in with a hand like that. You'll figure him out. Here we've been running him down, and he went in for the company with a bad hand. I guess that's the only way he could win. Here he comes now. <laughs> Go ahead, start booing. Oh, gee, Johnny, that didn't mean a thing. We were just kidding, no, that's all. Really sure. <laughs> that's it. What a pack of screwballs. <laughs> is tough. Think of the kind of terrain the men have to cope with in the mountains of Sicily and the jungles of New Guinea. Any recruit who can't finish his obstacle course in the minimum amount of time will be considered physically unfit for combat duty. Now remember, you're on your honor to make all the obstacles. All right, on your feet and over the cargo net. <laughs> Buck says I beat your time. Okay, Mac, you've got a bet. This is where Agnes said I'd fall down. I'll show her.
That's 20 only. is a daisy. Good. Oh, Chief, I, uh, I think Lacey's hurt himself. That cabin. Easy, Lacey. Take it easy. I can't make it, Chief. Guess I'm just too old to make it. They won't. What do you think about Pop Lacey? 56 years old. Yeah. He admitted to the chief he fudged on his age when he joined up. Yeah, with six kids. Two in the Army, one in the Navy, and a daughter in the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. You better fix up your bunk, Johnny. Inspection's in 10 minutes. So what? Uh, Lacey wants to say goodbye, fellas. You know how we feel, Lacey. I sure would have liked to have gone with you, fellas. But I just can't bear the thought that I might be responsible for some other guys getting theirs just because I'm too old to stand the gap. Oh, now, don't blame yourself. You tried, but... Sure, sure, you know. You know, I, I, I had a little trouble myself. Good luck. So long, Pop. Come on, Johnny, you've only got a few minutes left. Whose bunk is this, Chief? It's mine. Sir. Sir. Didn't you know there was going to be an inspection this morning? Of course he did, sir. Put him on the report. All right, sir. How do you want? I'll play these. Gee, you better take enough. I'm only coming around once. Give me one. One. Two. Two. Yep. Let me see. I want, uh, should take six, but I'll only... I'll open for one. Well, why don't you see it? If it wasn't for me, the company would have a perfect record. So I'm a heel and a gulping. Yeah. What if you've been batted around for years so you could get your family out of a dirty, stinking tenement? What if you'd always been a nobody and then you had a chance to be a somebody? Then they grab you and shove you into a uniform, tell you to stay put, my time, obey orders. They'd only give me a couple of months. Just a measly couple of months. But no, it doesn't matter what you want, it's what they want. If you guys put yourself in my place... I'll skip it. I got a couple of days extra duty. A couple of days. <laughs> they should take you out and beat you over the head with an iron bar. Now, wait a minute, boys, wait a minute. You expect the Japs and Germans to postpone what they're doing just so we can wait for you?
Yes? You wanted to see me, Chaplain. I'm a friend of Seaman Zamano. Oh, yes, yes. Bob, take over and make it good. I'll be listening in my office. Aye, aye, sir. They can't escape me. Sit down. You're one of Father O'Shea's boys from St. Paul. Yes, sir. He wrote me to look you up. And where do I find you? On the report. Yes, sir. I guess I got a little out of line. Well, sometimes a lad finds it hard getting himself adjusted. But I'll write Father O'Shea that you're getting along fine. We won't mention the report. I'd sure appreciate that, sir. Well, if anything bothers you, drop in and we'll talk it over. Maybe I can tip you off so you won't step on someone's toes again. Oh, thank you, sir. They're really good. The best. But then at Great Lakes, we have nothing but the best. See you, Sunday? Yes, sir. Stand by the cross. Cross. Let's get them all up. That's it. Steady now. Stand by the left fall. Left fall. Ready? Stand by. Go. Where's Mal? When we turned over, an oar hit him. Don't be a fool! Go for the breakwater! You're not much of a swimmer! Hey, the conquering hero! Say, well, what did Chief say? First, he compliments me, see? Then he lowers the boom on me for not ordering the boat back. That guy just can't be right around here. You're right with me, Johnny. Thanks. Uh, sure was a swell thing you did, Johnny. I couldn't let the guy drown, could I? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Bill, hit it. One, two. Yeah. <laughs> 
Three inches off the belt already. <laughs> I never would have believed it, Frankie, if I hadn't seen it. Hey, the way Frankie beats his gums about Agnes, she must be a pinup girl. <laughs> and he should have seen me on the obstacle course. Under the barbed wire like a lizard. Sixteen foot mud hole like a deer. Twelve foot barricade like a... A kangaroo? That's right. Then up the ladder like a... Like a chimpanzee. Well, isn't that right, fellas, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Frankie's really okay. Miss Ellen, apprentice seaman Zamano, requests the honor of the company of pharmacist's mate, Ellen Sayre, at an informal gathering at the home of Mr. and Mrs. Malcolm Randall, Glencoe, Illinois, on the evening of recruit graduation. Signed, Johnny Zamano. Is expected. Pharmacist mate Sarah will take the matter under advisement. Men, Company 101, Seaman Second Class, Malcolm Randall, Jr. Seaman Second Class, William Jameson. has been judged the honor company of this graduating battalion. Seaman Jameson, approach to receive the rooster emblem on behalf of your company. I sure swallowed the company to let me take this home with me. I'm gonna hang it right up next to my dad. Ah, oh, you had it coming, Bill. <laughs> sure, you do that. Well, I'm shoving along. See you fellows at the house tonight. With first aid classes, the canteen, and knitting, I've been keeping pretty busy. Oh, well, by the way, what about the sweater I knitted for you? What? Oh, yes. What do you mean, yes? Too big or too little? Oh, 
I'm sorry, my mind was wandering. Uh-huh, in a pretty straight line. She is good looking. I'm going home to St. Paul tonight. If you'll just say the word, I won't go. Why shouldn't you? Look, I'm a guy and you're a gal. And I'm off my beam about you. Johnny. Just say the word and we'll go to Chicago and get married. Johnny, and... I like you. I like you a lot. You don't give a girl a chance to think. What for? When you get a guy on the ropes, you press your advantage. You'd better go back to St. Paul tonight. You mean you're turning me down? Johnny, when you get back, you'll be put in an outgoing unit. And you'll be assigned a ship. After that, who knows how long it'll be before we see each other. After the war, maybe. I don't know. I just don't think this is the time for people like us to think about getting married. Okay, for now. But I'm warning you. When I get back, I'm gonna make you change your mind. Hey, Johnny, come on in. And Frankie's got an announcement to make. Hurry up. Well, I, I did it. Yeah, yes, I finally did it. Agnes and I are all set. Next Tuesday, we're going to have the blessed event. Oh, Frankie, <laughs> Wendy. Yeah, that's right, Wendy. You're, I, I get all mixed up, so you're all invited. Oh, Johnny, we want you and Ellen to stand up with us. How about it? I'd like to, but I'll be in St. Paul. Already made my reservation. Yeah, that's right. Well, Mal, how about you and Ellen? Sure, what's wrong with that? All right. You're getting a swell guy, Agnes. Don't try to kid me. I know him better than you do. Oh, Agnes, <laughs> <laughs> you make me... Uh, Hold on, Barbara B. <laughs> hey, a little more over the right eye. <laughs> we had such a lovely time. You have a beautiful home. Well, you should come back again, anytime. I'd love to. I'll ask Johnny to bring me. Oh. Thanks, Mel. So hey, come on, let's go. We better get the girls home, and I gotta get your train. Hold on, wait a minute, Bucko. When you get back, let's all have one last drink here together before reporting back to the station. What do you say? Swell! Oh, right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> seven o'clock a week from Tuesday. I'll send Steve and Billy a wire to come, too. Okay, Mal, we'll be seeing you. Okay. We'll look forward to it. Swell. Good night. Good night. Good night. So long, Mal. So long, John. See you then. You betcha. So, so long, Mal. So long, Frankie. Week from Tuesday, huh? That's right. Yeah, but don't forget this Tuesday, remember? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Goodbye, thanks. Good night. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, congratulations, Frankie. Thanks, Mal. I hope I have any up. <laughs> so long, Frankie. Yeah, so long. Bye. So long. Oh, no. No, no, Mother. This is my honeymoon, remember? <laughs> Goodbye, boy. Hello. So <laughs> So long, Mel. So long, Jocelyn. See you later. Gee, that Frankie's a swell guy. Wish I knew what I was gonna do with my leave. Well, I guess I better get back to the base. Well, look, you know, you don't have to report back till tonight. I think I better go. <laughs> Nothing doing. Chicago's my town, and I'm gonna show it to you. Come on. <laughs> I tripped over a body, I think. Chocolate? What's the matter with my chocolates? You eat one or else. No! No! Yes, you will. <laughs> it's been a marvelous week. What about Johnny? There's no reason to think about Johnny. Is Johnny looking at Good night, Rosalie. Go to bed now. Go on. I'll wait for you when you grow up. I don't forget. Johnny. <laughs> you know, I think of the Navy. Has it done you very good? Do you think so, Mama? Yeah, I know. You know, at first I didn't like the Navy. But then the guys you meet and the things you learn, it, well, it kind of does something to you. Mm. 
<laughs> yeah. He talks about a lady like it was his own girl. <laughs> oh, you're not so wrong, uh, Papa. I have got a girl there. Uh, ah. she's, she's beautiful. Beautiful like you, Mama. Oh, Johnny. I am glad. <laughs> I, I know that she, she's a nice girl, too. <laughs> now, we drink a toast for you girl, Johnny. Good. <laughs> yes. Alla salute. Salute, figlio. <laughs> Me. Darn nice of you to have the pharmacist made here to welcome the prodigal son. And wait to hear what my mother said when I told her about you. Can she cook? Can she sew? I told her you were Superman and skirt. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. Say, we're all here now. How about that toast, Mal? I'm thirsty. Okay. Oh, just one, honey. <laughs> you say it, Steve, for all of us. Let's hope. We're all assigned to the same ship and remain shipmates throughout the war. And may we all go home safely and soon in peace. Oh, swell. We're going to have to tell Johnny. Yep. I think I'd better do it, darling. I guess so. Hey, Mel, come on in. I... What's this? Um, Johnny, we, we wanted to... Johnny, we were just going to tell you. Mel and I are going to be married. My shipmate. The minute I turn my back, he knifes me with my girl. All this bunk about Navy spirit and loyalty. And me, like a stupid sucker, starting to believe it. You got it all wrong, Johnny. I didn't know I was going to fall in love with Mel. What about this not being the right time to think about marriage? What about that? I know now why I said that. Because I wasn't in love with you. No. With me, you wouldn't be getting a million bucks. Oh, I had this whole thing pegged right from the start. All right, shipmate, go ahead and marry her. You can have her and the Navy. John. Johnny. Lay off. Lay off. Come here, Johnny. Come here. Hey, Johnny. Want a lift? I want to go somewhere and get a drink. Hop in. I could use one, too. Come on, Johnny. Let's go. You've got to get back to the station. I ain't going back. Get me another drink. You go on ahead. I'll be right out. Hello? Yeah? Oh, yes, Trudy. Curly's? Well, that's out of bounds. We're due right back at the station. No, no, uh, look, I'll be right over. Yeah, okay. Say, come on, Mal, we'll be late. Oh, uh, look, I've got to get my car and go somewhere. Beat it back to the station, I'll meet you right there. All right. Oh, Mal. So glad you got here. Come on, pal, let's go. Get away from me. Johnny, you're way over leave now. Oh, Mal, I didn't know that. If the FPs got you here, you'll both be in trouble. Not a bad idea. Come on, I'm taking you back to the base. Oh, no, you're not. They ain't going back. You're not going over the hill. You can be sore at Ellen and me, but I'm not going to let you ruin your whole life. Get away from me, you double-crossing gulpin. You're going back. Oh, Johnny. You crazy fool. I'm going to make you go back. Even if you have to beat the life out of me. No, Johnny. Get out of the way, you get hurt. Johnny, please.
I'll get the cup. Okay. You got me licked. I can't hit you anymore. All right, you guys. Let's go. I see in your record that you are honor man of your company. Doesn't quite make sense, does it? No, sir. The punishment for these offenses is severe. You have a right to defend yourself if you can. I have nothing to say, sir. I'd like to say something, sir. Your turn will come next, Zamano. He's trying to protect me. I don't want him to. Step forward, Zamano. He wasn't drunk and disorderly, sir. He came to that place to get me. I was drunk. Was there some particular reason why he had to get you? I was going over the hill. He tried to stop me. Is that true, Randall? Yes, sir. I don't think I should punish you for trying to save a man for the Navy. Randall, you may go. Thank you, sir. You've caused trouble from the moment you came here. You've been on report several times. Chief Riley reminds me of your rescuing a shipmate from drowning, and I'm trying to take that into consideration. However, you've shown yourself a most undesirable person to have in the Navy. The records show that you tried to be deferred, and frankly, I have it in my jurisdiction to send you up for general court-martial. I've seen some men in my time who got the yellow ticket. They were very unhappy human beings. If I send you up for general court-martial, the least you will get will be several months in the brig. I'm telling you these things so you will realize how serious your offenses are. Have you anything further to say? No, sir. I'm taking your case under advisement for 24 hours. During that time, you will be a prisoner at large on the station. Don't try to leave. That's all. Aye, aye, sir. Hey, fellas, here's Mal. Did I let you off? Sure. See, what happened? Not much. Johnny took the entire blame. Gee, I wonder what's going to happen to him. Gee, I wish I knew. Attention. Packed and ready to leave in five minutes. David Anderson, Edward Block, Relman James, Clayton Liverpool, Ronald X. Balkan. That's me! That's me! Robert That's Burke. me! Frankie, you aren't Liverpool or Bolton? Huh? Huh? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going nuts. Shut that thing off, will ya? <laughs> What's the matter? You wouldn't want to ship out without the rest of us, would you? No, but waiting around like this, I've eaten my fingernails off down to the elbows. Yeah, I'd sure like to be assigned to that new flat top, the Guadalcanal. I hope we don't get split up. <laughs> oh, Chief. Hello, Randall. Still aboard? Yes, sir. You heard anything about Johnny? No, but the skipper will probably kick him out. That'll be awful. Only a miracle could save him now. Well, I'll see you before you shove off. Yes, sir. Look, if my number's called, stow my gear together, will you? I, I've got to send a wire. Oh, sure, sure. Gee, that's tough about Johnny, huh? I've arranged for you to see the captain, but even that may not do any good. You're a good friend, Mr. Hendall. Thank you so much. Well, now, don't get your hopes up. It may be too late. Thank you. Right. Come on, Mama. Everything you say may be true, Mrs. Amano, but one man like your son can disrupt an important part of our work. J Johnny. He made a mistake. But if you knew him, Mr. Capitan. Since he was a little boy, he worked very hard for us. He will be a broken heart if you take him off from the Navy. Yes. But your son didn't want to be in the Navy in the first place. He tried to get out. That was for us, too. He thought we needed money. But he has never once shown that he cared for the service. When he was before me, he didn't ask for a chance. He didn't say anything. That's my journey. 
He cannot talk when he thinks he's for a begging. He's so proud. Dismissed. Johnny Zamano, isn't it? Can I talk to you, Padre? Trouble? Uh, it's too late to do anything about it now, but I gotta talk to somebody. Go right ahead, son. Maybe if you talk to the priest. How you say, Bob? The chaplain? He, he write us. He spoke to the chaplain many times. Oh, I am sure he can tell you much better than we can. If you like. Let's go into the chaplain's office. I'm sorry, the Padre is out. At first I was sore. One moment. Wait, please. I couldn't get it through my thick head that the war couldn't wait for me to do things for my folks. That, that's my journey. Then the things I learned here. And the fellows have got to be my friends. I learned what the Navy really meant. And I wanted to be part of it more than anything in the world. The guys will think I'm a heel. But I wanted to do what I did. I, I just went crazy. I couldn't tell a skipper, but for one crazy minute, I smashed everything. My whole life. I know it is not a chance, Padre, but if I could just go on a ship with my shipmates, I'd want to go even if I knew I was never coming back. I understand, sir. What do you got? Agnes. Agnes. Queens. Yeah, Queens. Gee, I wish I could see Agnes just once more before we leave. Well, that's all for me. This waiting around's getting me the heebie-jeebies. One more day like this and I'll go crazy. Attention. We're ready to leave in ten minutes. D. Appleby. Hey, that's us. Frank Gimble. That's me. Albert Jackson. Joseph Kincaid, Malcolm Randall, Paul Rangel, James Lefkin, Bruce Smith, Timothy 
Sullivan. Say. John. They didn't Cop. call Billy. Turner from Mexico. Henry Walter. Walter Wallace. Billy. Oh, tough luck, Bill. Attention. Added to last detail. Peter Adams. Samuel Greenfield. William Jameson. William Jameson, that's me! That's me! Hey, fellas, I'm going! I'm with you! That's oh, my oh, Well, we do it. Yeah, all except Johnny. Yeah, Johnny. <laughs> Class of man on reporting could do. My special order of Captain Barton. All ends, Roman. Good going, shipmate. Thanks, Mel.